Goldman's machines are selling. I'm your host, Steve Van Meter, and thanks for joining me today. And while many people are saying that the bear market bottom is in and the bull next bull market has begun, machines are still selling. Let's head over. We picked today's story up with, look, it's blurred. You say, wait a minute, what's going on? Well, unfortunately, some of this data outside of Goldman, I can't share with you, but what I can tell you is machines are short and have recently started to short cover. Now, this is important because when we understand that these machines are buying tens or hundreds of billions of securities or even selling them, it's a big deal. So as we go through this, I'm gonna blur out the ones you can't see, but we'll talk about what's going on. So the first report you saw is really important because those machines were max short. And over to actually say late Thursday and during trading and Friday, they triggered the short cover a bit. So if you're wondering what was driving the tape on Friday, machines were short covering, but Goldman's machines, well, they're still gonna probably sell. Let's take a look at their report just came in this week again that in a flat tape over this next week they should sell about 20 billion of global equities if the market rallies real strong they could be big buyers at 14 billion and if there is a big drop over the next week they could sell up to 40 billion dollars in equities and that continues over the month that they're going to sell now notice this is lighter over this month at 14 billion in equities a big move higher over this next month means they could become big buyers at 161 billion and if there's a big drop of course we have quantitative tightening starting and that means 60 billion could be for sale so when we look at the positioning of these computerized models and they're important to understand even though you may not have access to the data and most people don't is the market is very momentum driven these machines are indeed momentum driven so right now we've seen some short cover but goldman still selling so let's take a look at what that means for the broad picture of the market and let's head over here actually is not where i wanted to be uh, let's go back here first and uh, uh, this report here also shows that there's a slight short covering in this company's CTAs, but after that, they're done. Now let's look at momentum from a bigger picture. What do we see on the S&P 500? Momentum is negative. The RSI is over 40. So from momentum signal, this is positive. This is a good signal. Magni still negative about to cross not yet but close momentum timer pro now mtb is a strategy that i've been developing some of you know to beat the machines that's what i was kind of designed it to do it's still showing sell signals remember these machines are all pretty much shorted out here but nevertheless nine days of sell signals on it again it remains free i'll put a link up in the corner and description below uh notably no position right now next upside target of 412 to 413 next downside target 396 Six. Let's take a look because we know that even though there's nine days of sell signals, a one month signal is at none, and the three month signal has been cooling off to a mid size, and the long term signal of six months is down to a minimum. So it's validating what we're seeing in the machines. Let's take a look at the charts now because this is pretty important here we see the upside target on the two-year volume profile is right here 413 414 so look for a move here the downside target still remains below and what did we say on that just to refresh my memory 406 it's right right here in this supply zone how do we know this is a supply zone well look where the volume is trading that's where you can draw your lines so you see here buyers are here and they've been here buyers have been here here and here kind of a kind of inverse head and shoulders pattern suggesting upside move. Above that, you've got sellers right here in this zone. There's your upside target. Nope, the RSI has not crossed positive. The, no, the MACD has not crossed positively. The RSI back in above 40. That's what we're looking for now. Let's look at the weekly because here's the case. This is what people are saying. The bear market bottom, they're saying is here. If that is true, then what we should see is stocks move through the supply zone, break through here and get retest all time highs, pull back and then take off. But one thing I want to note is when you look at the weeklies, we've been talking about this, the RS, uh, the MACD got this backwards, it's curling here, look like it's rolling over and headed lower. That would be very bearish. And the RSI needs to go higher from here on the weekly. It has to, if it breaks down, it tells us this was just a pause and a bigger move lower. All right, let's go on because the machines, we also know, are still heavily short on the NASDAQ. So they're really short tech stocks as well. RSI is at 49. MACD still has a negative cross, uh, but is looking to have a positive cross here pretty soon. Momentum Timer th Pro, 13 consecutive days of sell signals, still holding no position, waiting for the sell signal to cross back to a positive. Upside target at 314, 315. Downside target 293, 94. 
Let's take a look at the QQQ here and see what it has to say. And some more story, you'll note again, everyone's saying bear market bottom here. This this is over, only higher from here. The macro data says not even close. Here's your upside target right into three, eight, around 318, 319 right in here uh, is your uh, volume profile line at the last two years. Sellers dominating there. Bottom is downside risk still is where the buyers are at at 293, 294. So notably again, what, what you're expecting now is these machines, again, I wanna zoom in here and note the law the short covering is done these machines have pretty much did it on friday maybe there's a little left over going into monday's trading goldman's still selling a bit so looking for other buyers now is what the market needs to push this even higher all right, let's take a look at the bond market because we have data on it as well. As you note, it's all blurred out. Again, these I can't show you either, unfortunately, but what we can talk about is the bond CTAs are massively short and the way these things are price level driven. So if the if the price doesn't go down further on bonds, what happens is their short covering trigger drops a little every day, every day, every day, and then it pops. So unless price keeps falling, then what you'll have is a massive amount of short covering, notably from a macro perspective, what do we have in about two, less than two weeks? You got it, the Fed meeting. So all of a sudden you could see interest rates falling ahead of the Fed meeting, and the market will tell you all these reasons why, and I'll tell you, it's machines. All right, so let's take a look here again, uh, going forward, we noticed that support held, and this move higher is now, to everyone saying there's a breakout in yields coming. I'm not sure that with what we know about the machines, that is gonna happen. Let's head over, uh, we'll get to the charts here in a second. Let's look at TLT, the long bond. Uh, we know the RSI is under 40, it's at 36, momentum's negative, MACD negative cross, 21 days consecutive sell signals. So this too, momentum time bro is also looking for a reversal. Downside target is just below the current Friday closing. Upside target, I moved down to 112. So notably we're not, we shouldn't see any short coverings on these machines until probably late next week or uh, early the following week is what I anticipate going into the Fed. Here looking at, of course, send your treasury yields. What do we see on the RSI near oversold territory or overbought territory, let me say, on the yield side. Uh, and the MACD looking like it's slowing down potentially could cross over. Let's look at the long bond now. Notably, just massive selling. These CTAs all went short. We talked about how Goldman's, you know, was selling down into the late part here and finished selling. And even they said, hey, once we're done selling, we'll sit there for a bit, maybe a week, and then we're gonna flip back to buys. And we notably, that's what we see here. So bottom for right now is down in here. Well, that, if that holds, look for these CTAs to come and start short covering. The MACD is starting to bottom out. RSI went from uh, overbought to back to oversold. This now looking to move a little bit higher could get a huge boost from those machines all right let's take a look at gold a uh, similar story on gold here. The machines are not moving. I pulled those charts, but I didn't add them in here. Uh, momentum is negative. RSI is the only positive picture on the Momentum Timer Pro. It's sitting above 40. MACD's got a negative cross. 14 consecutive days of sell signals. We're still holding no position, at least from the machines. Again, their machines are not close to triggering on this. Upside target at 161 to 162. Downside target at 155. Your risk here is the same as everything. It's quantitative tightening. You know, every Everybody said this QT thing doesn't matter. Well, it does. And what I can tell you again, from a CTA positioning, nowhere near proximity of these things covering their short position. Come back to the dollar momentarily. Let's take a quick look at the chart of gold because it's still a bigger Pritchard breakdown here. You know, it, you know, the downside just isn't much. It's just right here around uh, 158, upside target up a little higher, 162. The bigger picture you have for gold is you zoom out over this 10 year chart and you see a topping pattern. I've got the lines on this gold futures. 1687 is the line that breaks down. You say, no, Steve, this is a continuation pattern. Yeah, well, that's what people said about silver until it broke out of its topping pattern and came crashing down. So there's your risk for silver and well you see the risk of silver turning into the risk for gold all right let's take a look at the last thing on the list of machines we want to look at and that is the dollar and what do we note about the dollar here i want to cover that the machines are long the dollar 
and they're getting close to covering those shorts on the other currencies. So as you know, they're in pairs. If they're short, if they're long the dollar, they're short something else. And I can tell you the things that are short, they're getting closer and closer and closer to start short covering. They do that, that's gonna take some pressure off the dollar. Again, at the time we see the same thing happen in the bond market going into the Fed mean. So keep that in mind, if you're long the dollar, what would you do here? Tighten up your stops, that's all you do. All right, let's take a look. What do we see here? RSI at 57, this has been cooling off. Momentum still remain positive. The MACD is still positive. We had this buy it open at 2854. It's still in the positive. And Friday's closing at 2919. So again, you may want to tighten your stops. The, the, the downside here is a 2850 upside target of 112. So keep an eye on that. We have 18 days of consecutive signals there. Let's look at the chart of the dollar and see what we have going on here. So it's pulled back a little bit. Again, the machines have not started selling based on the data I have. So you can see a little move down here, maybe even down just to the 50 day moving average you see trending up. But look, MACD is about to cross the downside. It's a little early. It always does that, it crosses early. The RSI is slowing down, but still above 40. So there could be one last throw higher before you see these machines start to short cover, or yeah, cover start reducing their lungs. And and after this kind of rally, well, it would make a lot of sense that they do that. So uh, it'll be interesting to see how the week goes out. But now that you know how the machines are positioned, you can maybe kind of look at your stops accordingly and make some adjustments to that. So with that, I'm Steve Ann Meter. Thanks for being fans. Thanks for watching. Bye now.